Hey everybody, Dr. Charlton here again. Today I'm going to be talking about Qualtrics and setting up a survey. We're going to get started with how to do surveys uh, using Qualtrics. So first of all, let's find the right place. So Illinois State has a subscription to Qualtrics. And so I'm just using the Illinois State built-in one. Um, I can see it down here in the search results number five. I'm just going to click on that. I already have an account set up. so. I'm logged in automatically. You may have to set up an account. But I go, for me, I go right in there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a new project. You can see over here on the upper right. Gives you, there's a lot of pre-built ones. I never mess with that because I, I know how I like to do things and how I set up surveys. So I'm just gonna create my own survey. I'm gonna name it. Um, and then I'm gonna get started. So first of all, you'll notice there is a default question already here started. There, there is a Def, uh, question block. So, so you can have a series of questions within one block. A block is kind of like a page in your survey. Think of it as a page. Um, the name of the block and the name of the variable or the name of the question is hidden from the from the uh, people that take the survey. So that's just for your information. So, right here, I'm going to name this block. Um, demographics and then my first question I'm going to collect um, their age I'm going to say what what is your age in years now I don't want to do multiple choice because um, people could have a lot of different ages maybe there's 100 different choices so what I want to do is um, just I'm just going to do in this case I'm just going to do a fill in the blank a text entry. So you notice I went over here to my change question type, and I just chose from this drop down. Now even within this, there's multiple choices. I could do a single line, multi line, have all these options. I'm just going to do a single line, which is kind of the default, and then they can put their age in years. Okay. So this is not a required question, but I want to make it required. So I click on force response. What other demographics do we need to collect? Um, maybe we need to know their income level. So I'm gonna add one more question. Actually, I'm gonna do a question about education level. What's the highest level of education you have received? And so what are the options? We'll say um, high school or less. And when I go to the next, when I wanna to go to the next option, I just hit enter, or sorry, I just hit tab. High school or less, um, let's see. Here's a college. training for your degree postgraduate degree all right so postgraduate degree that could be anything phd mba law degree medical degree we'll just put all that in one category here um and maybe i'll clarify like md phd MBA, Masters, etc. Just to make it more clear. Whoops, I accidentally hit enter and added a new line. I can just do backspace and get rid of that. And then I have my categories here. Um, and then I'm going to rename my variable just so that I can keep track of this. This is only for me when I do my analysis. I want to see um, the variable names when I run regressions and stuff. It's just easier when the columns have nice clean names. So I'm going to call this education. I did make it lowercase. I should make age lowercase. I'm going to make it all lowercase just to keep it cleaner, less to worry about when I do my analysis. And I need to make this required. So I click force response. 
Now I have two demographic variables. That's probably enough. Now I'm gonna add another, I'm gonna add a new question block. So my new question block will be, we'll call that opinions. And I'm gonna create a new question. My first question is gonna be, um, I'm gonna do an agree, disagree question. This is the most common type when we do surveys because it's really easy to analyze the data and it's, it, it's easy to cover all of your bases. It's just a very straightforward kind of question. It might not seem that way, but it, it is easier in a lot of ways. So I'm gonna first, I'm gonna um, please indicate how much you agree with the following statements. Okay, so first of all, I need to do like a kind of a header for it. And I'm gonna actually make that bigger. I'm gonna make that bolder, I guess, or I'm gonna make it make it stand out. So I'm gonna bold it and I'm gonna go 14 point. Okay. And then this doesn't need to be a multiple choice. This needs to be just descriptive text. All right. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to name this as a variable. I'm just going to leave it Q3 because I'm not going to analyze that. That's just descriptive text right there. Now I'm going to add a question below it. And this is going to be something that they can agree or disagree with. Um, and so my first question is going to be, uh, for example, I like to go bowling um, with my friends. I don't know why you would need to know that, but you might need to know that for the survey. Maybe you're doing a survey for a bowling alley. And you can see it's automatically added um, a, a like to dislike scale, but I'm gonna change that to agree, disagree. Disagree, agree. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it horizontal. And I'm gonna switch the order because I like agree to be higher. So so I don't want agree to be one, I want agree to be five in this case. And actually I'm gonna make it seven. And so the way I flip it is I go back, sorry, go back to, um, where was that? Here, here we go. And I can reverse the order with these dots, I believe, or wait, or is it this? Where are the dots? Oh, I see the dots just make it, so that you don't have all these words. So I can reverse the order right there. So that's what I've just done. So the nice thing is now, um, this is a seven point scale now. The nice thing is in my data, when I'm doing my analysis, the more they agree, the higher the number. And that just makes it more simple to do the analysis. It's confusing if it's the other way. I want their agreement. So if they say strongly agree, then it's seven. So people who, like to go bowling with their friends, they strongly agree with that, their score is gonna be seven out of seven. That makes a lot more sense to me and it's gonna make a lot more sense in my analysis. I'm gonna call this variable bowling. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm gonna, I need to make it required. And usually, usually I'm gonna do multiple questions that are related. So I'm gonna start to duplicate. You see this copy question? So I just copied it. Um, and so I'm gonna do a series of related questions because I wanna see um, what kinds of things people like to do with their friends. I don't know why I would do that. So I'm gonna be swimming. I like to go swimming with my friends. Okay. So I have a couple of related questions here and this is gonna be um, my opinions block, all right? Now, um, I can add one more block and I'm gonna create a new question. This is gonna be, um, sorry, do you know what? I'm gonna replicate the block above just out of convenience because it's gonna be another agree, disagree. So I deleted that block. I'm gonna come back up here and I am going to copy the block and I'm gonna call it, um, I'm gonna call this one Politics. I'm gonna get some political opinions. Um, let's see. So political opinions. 
maybe I want to gauge how liberal or conservative someone is. Um, um, let's see. We can say, um, confidence in the current U.S. president. I mean, they can agree or disagree, and that would give us a pretty good indication of where they were at politically. So that's pretty telling. Um, now, so that would tell us if whether they're more Democrat or whether they're more Republican. There might be other dimensions of politics that we want to understand um, within that. So maybe we'll gauge, for example, how they feel about the national debt. Um, I don't think the U.S. No, let's let's keep it positive, actually, just to make it more straightforward and clear for people. All these double negatives are confusing. So I'm going to say, um, I believe, sorry, the U.S. national debt is a problem. Okay, so the size of the U.S. national debt is a problem. This will get help us get you know gauge their politics as well. Um, but maybe it's it's going to be maybe slightly different than the president issue. So there might be Democrats and Republicans that are worried about the national debt, for example. And I need to rename these variables because they can't be bowling and swimming. This needs to be um, president and debt. Okay. And let's see. So now I have a couple of blocks. I can actually rearrange these blocks. So I'm gonna do something called a uh, survey flow. I'm gonna click on the survey flow and I'm gonna move my demographics to be at the bottom. That's gonna be last. So before they complete this survey, they'll do demographics. So, and then I wanna move my political opinions to be the first thing. Actually, I'm gonna keep that second. So we'll start with their swimming and bowling thing and then They'll go. Now you can do a lot more with this, and I'm going to get into this too as we go throughout the course. But this is just a quick introduction to a Qualtrics survey. So you can um, use a lot of different kinds of logic to change, you know. So maybe you want conditional logic. Maybe you want only people to only answer um, the demographics question if they, depending on how they answer the politics question. Maybe you want, you know, who knows what, maybe you want to show one of these two blocks and you want to randomly vary it. You have a lot of options in that way. So you can randomize what you show. You can, you can only show certain questions depending on how they answered a previous question. So you have a lot of control like that. I'm not going to get too into that, but I'm just quickly just showing you. So I'm going to save my flow. See it switched around. I'm going to preview my survey. Okay, please indicate how much you agree with the following statements. I have confidence in the current US president. I'm going to be totally neutral because that's my role as an instructor and not a politician. The size of the US national debt is a problem. Once again, I'm going to be totally neutral about that. And I'm going to go on to the next question. Um, I like to go bowling with my friends. Already I see a problem with this because I'm like, my friends don't really ask me to go bowling. I don't have that many friends because I have a young family and my kids keep me really busy. Um, so I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know how to answer this. I feel stuck. Um, maybe it should say like, I would enjoy bowling with my friends. Then it's more hypothetical, but I guess you don't really want hypothetical, but in a way it makes it easier to get answers out of more people as far as how much do they really like to go bowling with their friends. So I would say somewhat agree. I like to go swimming with my friends. Mm, I mean, I did in high school. I think I would disagree. <laughs> All right, let's see. Is your age in years? I'm 43. Highest level of education degree, postgraduate degree. Okay, that's it. That's my Qualtrics survey. I just previewed the whole thing and you notice it was previewed over here on the right as well. So this is a quick introduction into how to set up a survey. Um, 
it's very pretty straightforward. This is a powerful tool. It's called Qualtrics, and I'm looking forward to helping you learn more about it and getting you introduced into it. And let me know if you have any questions. Um, thanks a lot.